We're back. We're back, everyone. Very, you know, I think what will be a helpful video to some of you today who are potentially uh, first time home buyers or even looking into the process or have thought about the process. You've all thought about it at the very least in terms of like, hey, I would like to buy a place. How does it all work? So what this video is gonna be on is essentially the process of you are shopping for a home, find a home that you like, you make an offer and the offer gets accepted. Could have been a couple of back and forth counter offers, whatever it may be, but you have now an offer that has been accepted now what happens? Because that's very frequently the thing, right? You get, we see this even with our clients all the time. For those of you that don't know, I, I live and primarily work in Utah, but we help people with a lot of real estate needs in, in other states. Just got a request from Maine um, for a lot of land uh, on the coast with a river to fish in. Um, don't get me started on that. But uh, anyway, the question comes up, I'm under contract now, what the hell happens, right? We've been so engrossed in looking and putting in offers, you're almost like, I don't even know what happens now that we actually got one. So this video is just gonna be on that, what happens. The first thing I tell everyone when you get under contract on a house is very important, you need to stay emotionally dead, okay? That's something that I'm very good at. It is a combination of uh, ginger genetics combined with being left-handed, um, I've heard of emotions. That's about all I can offer, right? And I know that people, when they get emotional, bad things happen. So um, I advise everyone stay emotionally dead to the process because there's a lot of things that still have to happen. Maybe not a lot, but a couple of very important things that have to happen before we are giving you your keys and you're moving in your new futon into your uh, townhouse, right? So <clears throat> first thing that's going to happen is I'm going to connect all the 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 parties now to get everyone clear on like here's the contract here's our timelines here's all that so essentially i'm going to finish completing our little team our little marvel nerd uh, avenger force if you will okay so you obviously have me as your agent or whoever your agent is um you have your so you have your agent you have your lender now probably for the first time ever the title company is going to come into play or your escrow officer. You could hear those called a couple of different things at the end of the day. They're the same person. Um, those are your big three about the only other one of significance, your inspector, but you know, that that's a brief interaction and then potentially something called a TC or transaction coordinator. So I, uh, use a transaction coordinator TC. Um, I don't know why I did this, uh, uh, so I, I use one and essentially what they are is someone who's just going to be running the, uh, a lot of the admin stuff. Okay. I largely from a paperwork side, one, I hate it Two, Um, my, my real job is to get us to the point of, so I guess he was just unimpressed and going to completely just, you're going to walk off set. Finney, you just walking off set. Are you coming back? Okay. Um, I use a transaction coordinator because they make my life easier. I get you to the point of, look, we are under contract. At that point, paperwork-wise, I'm turning it over to the transaction coordinator because they're better at it than me, they're more thorough, and they just make my life easier. Now, you as the client, you're still dealing with your agent. Just understand that a transaction coordinator is going to be sending you some documents to sign and all that kind of stuff. So I essentially put together an email, introduce all the people like, look, here's the contact information for the buyers. Here's the contact information for the uh, listing agent, my, my comms, obviously, lender, title, inspector. Like, let's assemble this little team here. And we all kind of have our marching orders at that point. Um, so the lender is going to start processing your file. They will need stuff that's completely independent of me as your agent. I have nothing to do with the lending process and I don't really care to be involved in it. It's above my pay grade and I'm not legally able to do anything with your financing, right? Uh, title is going to start doing their things. They're going to be looking to make sure there's no liens on the, on the property, AKA like, oh, this seller has not paid their taxes in 10 years and they can't sell this property, right? Or something like that. So everyone's going to start doing their thing. Um, one of the first things that I need to, to get for us is, uh, Usually you'll just hear it uh, said out, but if you ever see SPCD, Sellers Property Conditions Disclosures. So um, 
they're just the seller's disclosures to say, it, at least in Utah, it's like a six page document that says, are you aware of any issues with the roof? No. And if it's yes, you disclose what, what it is. Yes, we had a couple shingles that blew off in a hurricane and um, we fixed them. And, and it's a, like six pages of questions like that. Are you aware of any issues with this? Are you aware of any mold? Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. So you go through that. So we need to get those. In Utah, you sign those, not saying you agree to them, just acknowledging that you've received them. So we need the seller's disclosures um, quickly. We then kind of the, the, the big ones are first major milestone is we need to get your earnest money in. In Utah, it's within four days of the calendar days, not uh, business days, within four days of the contract getting accepted. So whatever, it's Monday, Tuesday. So Monday, the thing gets accepted. Tuesday is day one. So really, by Friday, we need to get your earnest money in. Typically, you'll either turn that into the um, real estate brokerage or the title company, just kind of case by case basis, depends on, on, on your scenario. So we need to get your earnest money in. That's on you as the buyer to make sure that that is handled. And we will just make sure that you do that. Um, we need to get your inspection scheduled. So I want to do that as soon as humanly possible, even if we have two weeks to do your due diligence. Um, I have no intention of waiting two weeks. We're going to try to get that inspection done in like 72 hours. Okay. So that's my goal to get that thing done as fast as humanly possible. So we need to get it scheduled. And then really from that point, our big sort of, um, really our big one, like it's the one that we're all typically all kind of holding our breath to see how that goes. And that's why I say to stay emotionally dead is inspection day. So usually your inspection is going to run, I don't know, let's just say ballpark 500 bucks. No, you can't like roll that into your loan or anything. You just pay for it. So you, you got to have a few hundred bucks set aside for your inspection. We do inspection day. That either tells us, hey, the house is good to go. Middle scenario, there's some things we need. To, it, it's okay, but there's some things that we'd like to negotiate. Or three, this is a deal killer. Uh, I think it was last week. Yeah, I think it was last week that we had a deal killer where it was like, yeah, that, that, that killed it. You know, it, it wasn't horrible but it was enough that for my guys it was like we're out and that's also part of the challenge of winter by the way is that we'd seen the house twice never in the daylight because we'd seen it after 5 p.m when the sun's down because it's winter so um in daylight it was definitely not as uh just wasn't as good and there was a lot more issues so we do inspection day that's the big one typically if a deal is going to die it's going to die because of inspection day as soon as we know the inspection is at least good enough that we're not bailing from the deal which is probably one out of every 10 deals, by the way, that actually dies, um, or get the appraisal ordered. At that point, that's really kind of the last major thing is like just making sure that the house appraises for what we are um, offering or, or you know what we're under contract at. If it appraises for more than that, great. That's money in the bank, at least the theoretical bank. If it appraises for lower than what we're offering, then we have to negotiate that. I'd say nine times out of 10, it just appraises at, at value. So the appraiser knows what the number is that is being offered on the house. And um, pretty much he's going out there and just trying to justify that number for the, for the most part. That's kind of how it works. We'll do a, a, a video a different day on appraisals and inspection details and, and shit like that. So anyway, um, like I said, 90% of deals go smoothly and you go, hey, like the inspection is always the biggest hurdle because there might be stuff where you're like, well, I, I really need to get them to cover two grand of my closing costs so that I've got an extra two grand for when that water heater dies in the next six months or whatever it is. So inspection day is typically the biggest hurdle. 90% um, of the time, it's a rough average, but 90% of the time deals make it to the finish line. Everything's cool. You need to stay cool because we are emotionally dead to it. So you just need to stay calm, cool, collected. Don't fucking lose your mind because some people do. Um, but one out of 10, yeah, it's probably about one out of 10 where it's, you know, whatever. Maybe it was the appraisal. Usually not. Usually it's the inspection. But Or someone, uh, I mean, we've had this from time to time where someone's employment situation changes. Typically they got, you know, laid off for whatever reason or changed employers or some shit like that. So... Occasionally, there, there's something else that makes the deal die, but that's kind of the gist of it. Um, if you have any questions on that, chime in. I'm going to try to keep doing more and more videos that are based on your questions. Obviously, this channel has very few people that follow it or watch these, but I would love to just be able to make this show answering your real estate questions. I did have one last week on the 1911 Syndicate channel that 
I need to do some homework on, but I'll try to answer that maybe next week. Uh, on the local bourbon scene, I picked this up actually when I was in Montana, even though it's called Wyoming Whiskey. And it's made in Kirby, Wyoming. I've never been to Kirby, Wyoming, but um, I kind of like the bottle, kind of like the packaging. That's half the fun of whiskey. So I did pick this up. Definitely a, you know, it's a, it's a very local um, whiskey that I haven't had. I'll be excited to try it. I have not cracked it open yet just because I'm trying to get through some of the things that I'm working on before I just keep opening bottles and have a never ending, you know, half drinking bottle scenario going. That's a, that's a, I don't need, I don't need your stupid dog, Paul. So everyone, uh, me and the stupid dog, we're going to go and we're going to do other things. If you need real estate help, let us know. Happy to help. Um, be as specific as you can when you reach out to us. If you reach out regarding, um, you know, acquiring acreage and land and building a place and you want ponds and streams and deer and shit like that on your property. Um, we have a private video that is not <clears throat> public, but it is a private video that we will send you and essentially make you watch that before we indulge much in your request. So just understand that. Beyond that, we hope you and your dogs are well, and we will see you soon.